Hello everyone. Hello sewing friends. I'm back in the sewing studio and today I'm conquering uh, this wedding gown alteration and I stopped in the middle of it because I thought maybe you might want to see this. Um, we are dealing with some puckering and um, some issues right here in the bust line. So if you're having those issues too on a dress that you're sewing, this video is for you. Stay tuned and we're going to conquer that. Let me bring you in close. Okay, you can see that uh, we have a little puckering here. We had quite a bit of puckering through here. The bride actually didn't come in for this alteration. She actually came in to shorten the straps. And I noticed when I pulled the straps up, we still just had it gapping and bubbling, kind of funny-like. So I figured, let's start with a dart right through here to kind of pull out uh, this gappiness. And I also thought here we needed to do something, but I wanted to wait until I did this to see if I can straighten that out. And when I did this, it actually took out the gap that she needed um, taken out here in the straps. So I think we're gonna be able to do kind of a two for one thing here. Um, by taking it in here, we not only shorten the straps, but we also take out the gap. So we're gonna do what they call a dart uh, right through here, and I'll take you through that process. I have a feeling, the more I look at it, that this gapping has to do with the fact that it's hand-stitched to this bra pad. And I think if I unstitch it uh, before I go to do this and smooth that out and then stitch it in neatly, I think I can get that uh, to quit doing that bump. Let me take you in a little close so you can see that. You can see it puckering right here. And I really think it has to do with that it's attached to this bra pad right here. And we have a little extra fabric here, along with we had a lot of extra fabric right through here. So I pin this on the bride um, to get most of the gap out. And then I figured once I got it on my um, sewing machine, I could get this out. So let's let's conquer that. Okay, let's take a look at this closer now that we have it off the mannequin. And I like to just examine it before I decide to do anything. I can tell that this uh, cup, if I kind of pull it out of the way, So I will end up opening this up and doing a dart right here. So I'll have to get to this lining layer and I need to get to the other layer. The only problem is they have sewn the tool right into that. I was hoping I could just separate that. Okay, so my next step is I want to, now that I've looked, I want to at least mark before I go any farther. <clears throat> and there's a couple ways you can do this. One is by drawing it out. Um, and a lot of times I'll find that side seam. Kind of mark where it's starting. It's about three and a half. Side seam. Sometimes it's more challenging to find those side seams. Yeah, at three and a half. 
So then I will go ahead and draw my bodice side seam. I know it's three and a half from this side seam. And I'm going to be putting a dart here. And we're looking at at the top. Both of them look like they are a half an inch. So I'll be kind of just giving myself my own, it's my own language of telling me where to go. So like two down. Will be That side's a half an inch. That one I've pinched a little less than half an inch, but I think half an inch is gonna be just fine. And about three inches down. The important thing is <laughs> to kind of mark it so that you know when you take the pins off that you can put that back. And this dart is about five inches long, give or take about five inches long. Okay, so that's one way, and I will jot that down just to have that. Another way you can do it is by marking it with a marking pin and I will go through and mark. And then I also use, to even everything out, I use my measurement in the end anyway. But I'll mark like both sides of that. And I will also, on the inside, be marking. Let's see, I can see. Just giving myself some ideas before I go to tear it all apart. And then the next thing, a third way you can do it, especially with lace, is to give yourself some safety pins on either side of the dart, just through like one layer. on both sides so that when I take those pins out I actually have it then marked I know for a fact that those are crossing over just three different ways to mark it just basically so when you go to tear this all apart you can figure out where you are again. So you can see I've just kind of given myself little markings of how that dart is going to be. But I've also measured so I know when I turn it inside out, I'm going to be going off of all the measurements just to take in. But now i got to figure out <clears throat> what I'm going to do about the fact that this is inside sandwiched in between. So I'm going to go ahead and undo the top stitching and try to get inside.
Really, I think you have to be an investigator nowadays in order to um, be a good seamstress. You have to go in and see what it is that this manufacturer is doing to assemble this. Because nowadays, who knows? <laughs> you will get quite a few of these similar, but um, I'm noticing that each year there's new stuff and new ways that they're trying to basically glue this thing back together. I was talking to one of you guys on one of the videos um, in the comments and we were talking about the fact that boy in, in all these years so much has changed Wedding gowns used to all be made out of pretty much satin. If they had lace, it was an overlay. And they were also made so that a seamstress could get up inside them easily and either let them out or take them in. And nowadays, I don't think they want us in here. So you can see I'm opening this up just to see what's going on in here. Okay, and I can see that this inner layer of tool is attached right here. So I'm going to go ahead and release that too. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, I have now separated the tool layer, which is like in the place of lining, from the bodice, front and back. So now, need to see if there's a way up inside of it. Usually not. Come down here at the bottom and go up inside and just see, can I inside this out? Oh my goodness, it goes all the way through. It, it, it's a miracle. Oh, but not well. It's super tight. Because they have, this front bodice is all sewed up and that is sewed up. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, if it's going to be easier for me to just go from the top and try to put it back together that way because this is almost impossible to get into that tiny space. They're not leaving me very much space. I think I might just go from here, open it here, and then hand sew that back together here. I feel like that's my best bet because that little tiny part that actually is covered up and it's not all see-through is so tiny. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through this top and I'm going to just inside it out the best I can and I'm going to create a dart. Okay, I did all my wrestling. <laughs> off camera. You no need to see that <laughs> as I tried to uh, mark it. But as you can see at the top, I have my darts pinned um, and I've measured them out, making sure that they uh, slowly fade 
you want to be really careful not to end up with a point. You don't want to kind of go off quickly and then get this weird uh, pucker. <laughs> so you want to just fade that right into the seam. And then I will go ahead and sew that. Might even be easier with this off. Trying to get in there. I do like to have my needle down, which helps when I'm shifting, not to have it shift off. And I don't know if you know this, but your machine, you can decide whether it starts with the needle up or down. going for a long time to get it off. Now, I'm also imagining the curves of a woman's body so that I can slowly, I don't want to do any jerky moves or any zigzags or anything like that. You want that to be just smooth and kind of almost arch with it and then slowly fade out. And then I'll do that for both of those parts. This side <clears throat> has the boning, which it's more of a wrestling match. Okay, let's see if you can see that. So we have our two layers. Can't tell, but I've got a dart in each of those. Okay, so now I have the darts and I have it pressed and instead of going up inside turning it inside out and sewing this seam closed it's a little hard to get into this small of a spot especially with all the bra pads and even on here there's a bra pad um, so I've pinched that together and I'm just going to um, stitch that together let me show you how to make it invisible. So I'm coming out there and I'm gonna go straight down. I'm hoping you can see that. So I'm coming straight down from there. I'm gonna go at an angle and go straight down in at an angle. So you go straight down or straight across come up a little bit okay so I finished um, sewing these two up and actually then pressed it and put my pads back in place. So now we can flip it over and now we need to work with this here. I forgot to say something too. When I put this back together, um, I chose not to attach the um, lining tool back into the seam. And the reason is, is because this was a problem when it was attached that it was puckering this up really bad. So I'd rather it be kind of free flowing. So when I place my dart here, I can lay this smooth and tack it down. So that's the route I'm gonna go that direction. So our next step is 
we have to put a dart on this lace layer. And the easiest way, because these are no longer kind of seams you could open up and get inside, um, if this was all a satin bodice, I would actually peel back all of the appliques and then I would uh, go ahead and uh, do my dart and then put the appliques back. And you can definitely do that with this here. Um, but one thing I've learned, and I've learned it from other seamstresses um, in some of our sewing groups, is that we can actually split this down the middle like this. I did it here already. And then we're gonna fold it over on itself to be the dart. I'm gonna have to go a little farther there too. And we'll end up going something like that and placing it back. So before you do that, if you notice, there is this beautiful edging of beadwork here all the way across and then there are beads here. And so if I just go through and cut that, all of these beads are going to come off. So what you've got to do, and I did it to the other side, is you need to come alongside, figure out where your best kind of direction to cut is and so to be in the middle of that dart so that we'll fold that over and so I see here I kind of put a purple mark here that I'm going to cut through here so everything all the beads from this side over I want to secure so I have a needle that goes through beads and I'll come way down here at the bottom knotted that go through my beads and I'm just securing those before I cut. Now there are some different ways, some seamstresses have come up with some creative ways to do that. Some of them will glue the thread on the other side. I've seen them do that. Um, I've seen them do all different kinds of things and sometimes you come up and there's no beads here and that's even easier. So now I know that all these beads right here on this side and on that side, I wanna kinda secure those down as well. I find that just grabbing a needle and thread and just kinda going through ahead of time before I split everything and just securing those just makes all the world of difference when I'm about to kind of sever the thread that is connecting many of them. Now I'll do the other side. Come down, here's where I'm gonna split it. Come down quite a ways because I want those all to be secure because they're all on kind of like one chain of thread. Okay, and then now, just like I did to this one, as I was going, I lifted a couple of the uh, leaves just to separate them. Let me see how I might go through here. Start right here. I think I'm going to go like that. I think I'm go like right. 
right on the other side of that one. The other one ha had more overlapped leaves that I had to undo. This one I d didn't have to really do much. And I want to go straight. I think I will take this leaf up here. Because as you can see, going to make it a little nicer when I can fold that applique down over. Okay, so as you can see, this will get folded according to, and I'm probably going to have to move that applique and then smooth it. And I'm, how I'm going to do that <clears throat> is I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the dressmaker's ham, place that over it. And then I'm going to play with this until I can get this to lay exactly like that, the way I want it. i got to make it look nice, and then I will hand stitch that all back together. Okay, we're going to do the same thing I did over here. I have the dressmaker's ham lay it so that everything is nice and even. Uh, the key is to matching up which side looks the best. And so where that pin was, I fold it over. Kind of overlaying that. Get my end nice. And then just making this all lay really, really nice. Kind of open this up a little bit too. And this right here is attached here and attached there, so you can kind of lay that flat. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is just put pins around. Also be careful because if you have a bra pad underneath that has a gel layer and you poke through it, you can actually cause kind of an oily leak. So be aware of what kind of bra pad you have. And what I mean by that is, this one here, I don't think it is. I think this one is more foam. Um, but some of these in those little pouches here is an oily residue. Uh, it's like a gel pad. And if you poke that by accident, it could leak out an oily residue um, that ends up um, staining your gown. So be very, very cautious of that area there. And like I said, this doesn't feel, this one feels like it's, I don't think it's gel. I think that one is more of foam. But when you're doing something like this, just be aware of where your pad is, what kind of pad it is. Um, we don't want any 
panicked last minute <laughs> disasters. Bridal is hard enough and full of drama on its own without having to have extra drama. So what I'm trying to do is how this was made was that the bra pad, this part just was loose and bunchy on top. If they would have fixed this in the factory, I wouldn't be dealing with it now. Okay, so now I'm going to come up this seam and I'm going to really secure this hand wise here and then sew all this together and look at how much better those look. Once the pins aren't there, they won't poke out. You won't even be able to tell. And then, of course, I'll give it a good press, which will mold all of those appliques together. Is a little bit of the purple. This is a baby wipe with no perfumes, no dyes. Okay, next side. Okay, and just like that, we have the bodice taken in. If you remember, it was really gappy and puckery all through here. It seemed like the uh, outside layer was kind of fighting with the inside layer. It wasn't quite sitting right. Uh, so we took it all apart in all the different layers, put in darts, um, laid it all back nice and neat, and the customer should be really happy. It looks so much better. Um, let me know in the comments if you've ever uh, cut <laughs> your appliques or do you peel them back and just do a dart. Um, either way is great. And I do have to say thank you uh, to our Facebook groups, those Seamsters Facebook groups that help us so much. And I don't know exactly when, um, but I'm pretty sure it was Diana Casey, I think is her name. Um, who first showed us on one of those groups how to cut through the appliques. And I'm pretty sure right after she taught me, I was like, what? You can just cut right through all the layers? <laughs> what is this? That makes it so much easier. You don't have to re-bead uh, sometimes. You just have to secure some beads, stuff like that. So thank you to everyone, all of the seamstresses my entire life who taught me so much, and hopefully you learned something. Let me know in the comments uh, if you learned anything or if you've been doing it this way all along. Love you guys, and we will see you in the next video. 
I'm going to set this up. The customers come in here in a couple hours, and I'm excited to see it on her. Bonus tip, by the way, um, when you set up your dressing room for your upcoming bride, do you set her dress out so that she's in awe when she walks in? I think it's so important to capture the bride's emotions right away uh, when they come in. You'll have a happier bride because of it. Uh, you'll have a more excited bride. So just a little side note. Have a great day, everyone.